A handful of protests are taking place across the country, the biggest in Boston. Despite some tense moments between officers and protesters, the city is praising all parties involved. 99.9% .9 of the people here were for the right reason, and that's to fight bigotry and hate. The president also tweeting, our great country has been divided for decades. Sometimes you need protest in order to heal, and we will heal and be stronger than ever before. A second police officer has died in the wake of an overnight shootout in Florida. The threat to police officers has grown geometrically, where it's seemingly okay among some groups to dehumanize police and treat them as subhumans, which is totally unacceptable. A tumultuous week for the White House, ending with the departure of the president's chief strategist, Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon still can play a really important role getting the message out on the priorities that he was fighting for that still need to be done for the American people. On Monday, the country will experience a total solar eclipse for the first time in 99 years. How are you preparing for the solar eclipse? Eclipse party. What kind of party is that? It's a lot of wine. state building you're joining us here on a sunday morning and don't adjust your set you're not watching it during the week you're not watching fox business network we just got a lot of different people on the couch today it's, it's good to see you guys good to see you. trish todd and john today it's a like wild it. crew wow <laughs> We're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time, and we'll I, I think I got to see you dance a little bit there. Well, on the side. I, that's about as dancing <laughs> as I get. That's, that's all of my dance ability right there. That's in impressive my wrist. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see if on. we can keep the wheels on this show today. What do you think? I think we can keep it on. I think we're gonna be fine. <laughs> we got a lot to get to. Obviously, the big protest yesterday uh, there in Boston, uh, raising a lot of eyebrows, and the president tweeting about it, um, and in fact in support of what was happening, in support of the nation, in support of coming together. That said, taking a step back, he did tweet this. Looks like many anti-police agitators in Boston police are looking tough and smart. Thank you. But then he went on to say this. I want to applaud the many protesters in Boston who are speaking out against bigotry and hate. Our country will soon come together as one. Well, good for him. This is exactly what he should be doing. It's important. We need to heal as a nation. And I got to tell you, I have not liked what I have seen. I have seen members of the left really try and instigate this, try and push this narrative forward that somehow uh, the White House is filled with a bunch of white supremacists. This was Nancy Pelosi's statement. This was the statement from the DNC. And it's wrong because our country has come a long way. And for them to be trying to work this from a political perspective for identity politics reasons is wrong. So it's important that the president get out in front. I'm glad to see that he put those tweets out. We're going to be talking a little bit later on to a historian who has some thoughts about what happens, especially to our young people in this country, when you tear down statues, when you sort of erase, revise history. Uh, some interesting thoughts on that. So you're going to want to stick around for that. We're also going to take a look at Boston, excuse me, Dallas right now, a much different situation there than in Boston. Uh, take a listen to this soundbite we have for you. And this, of course, coming on the heels of now two officers basically assassinated on Friday night into Saturday morning. And when you hear that rhetoric, it's painful to hear that rhetoric when so many brave men and women defend us every single day. The, the la latest two police killings in Kissimmee, Florida, just basically outside the Disney World area, but also, um, you know, remember what happened in Dallas when that gunman, you know, targeted nine, nine police officers uh, hey. not that long ago, and, and still they're chanting anti-cop slogans down there. You, you, you kind of wonder what's happened to us as a society that, that now there's this, this animosity towards police. I don't know about you guys, but growing up, I mean, the police were people that you revered mm -hmm. and they were up on a pedestal and, and my own children look at the police officers and admire them. My own daughter would actually is a police officer for Halloween, which I don't know if that's so safe on the streets of New York right. City these days, but they, they admire them. And, and I think it's important that we as a nation get back to that. They are pillars in the community and there needs to be some built-in respect and instances like this don't help it and, and look at what happened in florida you know one officer black one officer white they 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 both gave their lives trying right. to keep their community safe uh 
uh, integration of police forces uh, has long been accomplished and uh, just the complaining that some people will never be happy. And I almost think it, it almost goes beyond race at this point when it comes to the, the officers. There's just an us against them mentality from so many, I, I don't even want to say on the left, so many on the fringe. <laughs> and then you have what you have here, the fringe left. Um, but but yeah, you, ha you have what you have here and it just, it is so sad. And, and now we have to transition to the statue talk because, you know, a week ago or eight days ago, this sort of all kicked off uh, there in Charlottesville, Virginia. And now we are in a much different world where almost graffitiing, if that's a verb, any statue you don't like right. has become commonplace right. here in the country. Um, and, and a lot of these heroes at some point, at some point in our nation, turn villains. I mean, that's Christopher Columbus right there. 1492, we all know what happened then. That's in Houston, Texas. This particular stand, statue was vandalized. Yeah, look, I, I have some mixed feelings on the statues and, and you know, I grew up in the North, so I, I may not have the same appreciation for it that those in the South do, but what really bothers me is that it's like, how far do you want to go with this? I mean, now you're going to start going after Christopher Columbus or you want to tear down George Washington? I mean, at some point this has to stop. And I also think, guys, it's interesting that it's happening now, right? Why now? Right. Why didn't this happen six years ago or eight years ago while President Obama was in office? I think there's a very deliberate reason, and that is because the left is trying to instigate this. They're basically saying, and in fact, uh, Howard Dean made a statement essentially saying, if you're a Republican, you are a racist. That is wrong. <laughs> it is irresponsible, and it is leading to what we're seeing right now in Does the streets of Boston, Charlottesville, and of course, the statue's coming down. Speaking of history, does anyone re recall that Abraham Lincoln, who freed the slaves, was the first Republican president? And, and there were many, many Democrats who fought the Civil Rights Act tooth and nail. Oh, yeah. No, the, so, the, the Democrats historically have not been on the side of African Americans in this country. And on top of that, we saw what happened to an Abraham Lincoln statue just this very week. And going back to what you said on the, the now, mm -hmm. this is the, literally the last eight days. That, that this uproar has, has taken over the nation. And I was thinking the same thing. We, we, we read history books. Mm -hmm. We lived through all this. We learned about the rights and the wrongs in our country. And then the last eight days, boom, everything's wow. exploded. You know, look, it, Donald Trump in that initial presser on Tuesday that sort of kicked a lot of this off, um, could have could have done a stronger, better job at, at condemning what he saw. Instead, he got baited into a fight, frankly, with leftist members of the media who wanted to take him down mm. that path and wanted to pigeonhole him into looking like a racist. He's not. That wasn't what he intended. But he let them take him there. And consequently, you see a pile on effect right now that has become really irresponsible and is dangerous for the country. And it's being led by the left. There's also this other big topic that we brought you over the course of the last 48 hours. The Missouri Democrat state senator who said she hoped for Donald Trump's assassination. There's a picture of her right there. Fellow Dems, basically many of them attacking her, but not all of them. And in fact, she herself started a petition called I Stand With Maria. And here's the, the main quote. She says, we know that there is a huge difference between saying that someone hopes Donald Trump is assassinated and someone calling for his assassination. I'm going to play what? lawyer here. What? <laughs> what? what? Huh? Come on. I mean, this is this is a new low. You really, know, it's a new low, isn't it, John? Conservatives were mortified when Barack Obama, probably our most liberal president, uh, maybe since FDR, maybe maybe more so than FDR. But conservatives were apoplectic at his election, but they said, okay, that's what the country decided, essentially. We're going to go with it. And, and the election of Donald Trump seems to have unhinged the left, like this uh, state lawmaker in Missouri. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, after you, please. Well, I, I just find this uh, absolutely outrageous, dangerous, again, rhetoric. Is she trying to inspire one of her followers to do something unthinkable? You know, these lawmakers need to think about the state our country is in right now. And forget the politics for a second. This is not about politics and getting Democrats elected. This is about the healthy future of our country. And so for her to make such an atrocious statement, and by the way, where's the Democratic party on this. Right. 
they're not saying this is wrong. They're, they're not requiring her to step down. This is a woman who is a state lawmaker who's supposed to uphold the law, Todd. Yeah, there, there are two parts of that. Some Democrats did speak out. Claire McCaskill did speak out and the chair of the Democrat state party in Missouri. But there's a big but. You haven't heard anything from the Democratic National Committee. And Kaylee McEnany, RNC spokeswoman, had this to say about that. Where is the national leadership from the Democratic Party calling for her resignation? Uh, you have I can't a few hear them. state senators. They're not there. I can't you, hear anything. you have a few senators who have come out, but where's Tom Perez? Where's the Democratic National Committee? There would be so much pressure on the RNC, Ronna Romney McDaniel, to denounce someone, and she would, who called for the assassination of President Obama, let's say. We don't have leadership here. There you go. I mean, there's the point right there. Of course, this is a big talker. It was a big talker yesterday. We want to hear your comments. Friends at foxnews.com. Hopefully, we'll be able to read some of them on air. Yeah, let us know. like what to know what you think, think about that, uh, that <laughs> rather inflammatory statement from yeah, the... Uh, I, I, I guess no matter what side you are on, no matter where your political beliefs are, there is no way as an American you can condone that kind of rhetoric and, and, and trying to, to suggest that somebody assassinate our president is really, really despicable The Secret stuff. Service has enough to do, folks. Anyway, let me turn to some of the headlines that we're following right here for you. A Fox News alert, the second officer gunned down in an ambush has died. Sergeant Richard Sam Howard succumbing to his injuries a day after being shot in Kissimmee, Florida. He was responding to a call with Officer Matthew Bass Baxter, who died Friday night. Police arresting Everett Miller, charging him with first degree murder. Officials say no other suspects are expected to be charged. City officials have set up a bank account through SunTrust for those who would like to donate to the fallen officers' families. North Korea issuing a new warning to the United States overnight, threatening a merciless strike if military drills are carried out with South Korea. A North Korean newspaper claiming the exercises will drive the nation into uncontrollable nuclear war. The U.S. military shrugging off the threats, saying it plans to go ahead with the 10-day drills as scheduled. The terror investigation in Spain now shifting to a missing Ayman and a house that it exploded, a man rather, days ago. Police searching the home of the gentleman they believe may have been at the center of the terror cell behind the deadly back-to-back -back attacks in Barcelona and Cabrils. Investigators think he may have been killed in a failed bomb-making operation on Wednesday. Meanwhile, the widow of an American killed in the attack is now speaking out on the devastating loss of her husband. I don't want to wake up without him next to me, and I don't want to watch TV without him. All of it is just going to be a lot more empty. 14 people were killed in Thursday's attacks. The suspected driver of the van in Barcelona remains on the loose. The Powerball jackpot is now a cool $650 million, woohoo! After there were no winning tickets for the latest drawing, there has now been no winner since June 10th. The next drawing is this Wednesday, so get your tickets. Estimated cast value of $411 million. The chances of winning are about one in nearly 300 million. Mm, I take it. <laughs> and those are your headlines. You take that? Why not? Why not? Coming up, <laughs> President Trump trying to bring the country together by tweeting during the Boston protest. But will he continue the same tone during his Phoenix rally on Tuesday? We look into it when we come back. Welcome back 17 minutes after the hour. Thanks for waking up with us here on a Sunday. It is a fresh start for the White House with the departure of the president's chief strategist, strategist, I should say, Steve Bannon. So what should the focus be now for the Trump administration? Joining us right now to discuss is Fox News contributor and former Trump Hispanic Advisory Council member, Steve Cortez. Good to see you, Steve. Uh, I know you're Good counting morning, on Trish. tax cuts, but uh, there are a lot of people that are wondering uh, what's happened to the agenda in light of Steve Bannon leaving. Your thoughts? Right. Well, you know, first, let me say, Trish, that I think some of the opponents of Steve Bannon who are celebrating his departure should be careful what they wish for, because uh, I think that Mr. Bannon is going to be an incredibly effective voice for the president on the outside. Uh, I think that he was uh, in some ways not best utilized as sort of a whisperer behind closed doors in the West Wing to the president. I think he's going to be incredibly effective uh, as a very loud voice for the Trump voter now in, in the public, no longer shackled by uh, the provisions of a government job. But to answer your question about the agenda going forward. I 